Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the kingdom, y'all. You already know it's the king speaking to you. You just clicked on part 30 of the Disco Elysium playthrough. Welcome back. Let's keep it going. Okay, so... At the end of the last one, we had just got done talking to Klasia. And we kind of broke down um, what we thought happened. And now we are trying to figure out where we think the bullet came from, right? So, um, they killed uh, Lely, Lely, I think the guy's name is. Um, he was, that's the name of the guy who, who died. So, 2200. Definitely want to get that back. Um, make Titus give up Ruby's location. Let's not do that yet. Okay, so let's go over and let's try to find these, these places. Um... There's a lot of stuff around the coast, too. Um, Alright. Kuno has promised to stop. Report your finding to the cryptozoologist. I think they're downstairs. Let's go talk to this cryptozoologist. Alright, let's, uh... Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So he was just a child. He purses his lips, crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid, or the missing locusts. It's something else. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> the aging cryptozoologist breaks into a hideous coughing fit. He has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. There won't be a next season. Not for this. Find a phasmid or admit defeat, people. <laughs> um... Man, I'm really feeling this costing me time on my main investigation. It's not worth risking your health. You should call it a day and go home. I'd offer to help, but I may have my own things to do. Damn it, maybe I can still restock the trap for you. You've come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the trap. Let's do this. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... He wants to see this tale through as much as you. I can Otherwise, do it. he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Really? It's too much, officer. <laughs> Start coughing again. What Morel means is we're grateful for your help. She nods to her husband. He's a fresh batch of locusts. They should slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. We will definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. No question about that. How did you become a cryptozoologist? I just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Have you ever discovered a cryptid? Real. I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. I don't. It's a profession just like any other. Honestly, being a cryptozoologist wants most of the garbage I've seen people do. Cryptozoology does seem like a lot of wishful thinking. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. 
Your nerve endings tell you there is no such thing as a positive surprise. Life surprises are mostly miserable. And has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. Hmm. What kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts. Like the one that brought us here. To look for the Fazmith. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough? Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration. Not real research. And certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot. And both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. So you never, so you have never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So how many cryptids have you have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Only two have been proven to be real? Yes. The Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Two out of four thousand is not even one percent. Not approvingly. The Neanderthalian phasma we third. I don't even know what to say. It's a small number of discoveries. Indeed. If our expedition is successful, Every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Alright, thanks. Yes. Alrighty, well. So now... Find the Insulindian Phasma. First we stock the trap that you left empty before. The trick is to remember which one it was. Damn, that is a trick. Um, alright. Well. What, um... I guess we should go to these locations and... Check Island for bullet traces, check Boardwalk, check Land's End. Okay. Run the number on the victim's armor. Maybe I should try that again. Get up on stage in the evening. It's not evening yet. We'll come back. Um, should we? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Keep moving. Maybe after Kim leaves, I'll try to drink a beer. I haven't had one the whole time, you know. I deserve a little something, something. Plus, it's one of my tasks. And I've never done it. So, I'm just interested to kind of see what happens if I do have a beer. Do I have one? Do I have any alcohol in me? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I have a speed bottle. Hmm. Well. I guess I'd have to buy one, right? Okay, here are the kids. Where specifically is this boardwalk? I know down here are the drunk guys.
Um. Guy and his kid. Pretty sure this isn't the one. The locusts aren't doing all too well, but yeah, I said I didn't think so. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall. Reaching from one corner to the other. Have I said that before? Unable to piece together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. Fine. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant smiling mouth. Smiling, it's dead. I feel like I did that before and failed, didn't I? Can I go past here now? Yeah. I forget who this guy is. As you approach, the man turns and greets you with a Oh, the Sunday friend. He appears completely at ease, like a common holiday maker. Ah, super. It's the officer. I was not expecting to run into you again, but things have a funny way of turning out, no? What brings you down to the scenic Martinez coast? Actually, I was wondering what you're doing here. I need to, I need your help forming a committee. I'm trying to assign our responsibility. My friend, if it's la responsabilité you're after, I have good news for you. There's no need to form such a committee because it already exists. God, of course it does. These moral intern types. The Comité de Responsabilité de Revachol, it acts as a sort of clearinghouse for coalition activities. To put it simply, they are the ultimate arbiters of la responsabilité in this part of the world. Yes, this is just the sort of reasonable authority you're looking for. I would offer to connect you with the committee myself, but alas, I am not actually in Martinez. What? Where is he then? He's speaking figuratively. He means he's not in Martinez in his official capacity. What are you talking about? I'm looking at you right now. I got it. You're only here on personal business. So, where are you then? Precisément. Officially, I am still in La Delta, preparing for an upcoming conference on fuel oil derivatives. That's why it would be extremely irregular, or potentially even inappropriate, for me to intercede with the committee concerning a district I'm not officially in. This is an urgent matter. I need to get in touch with the committee. How am I supposed to contact him, the committee then? Are you saying I should just give up? Yes, you've made your persistence quite clear. Under normal circumstances, I would have to insist you go through the regular channels. No, no. You can't let them give you the runaround. But if you have information of a vital interest, they might be willing to entertain an exception. In which case, I would advise you to contact them via Coalition Worship Archer. Wait, what's Coalition Worship Archer? Officer. You mean to say that you haven't noticed the giant coalition aerostatic peacefully patrolling the skies over Rivashan? You follow the man's gaze out toward the west. There, hanging some distance above the horizon, you can just make out a strange silhouette. It looks to your eye like some kind of long metallic fish suspended beneath a number of ceiling fans. Not just any fish. It moves like some ancient bottom feeder gliding over the ocean floor in search of prey. It's amazing. An inspiring symbol. Looks like a fish. Oh, I can't believe I never noticed it. Isn't it? A triumph of both technical ingenuity and international cooperation. I, for one, feel much safer knowing it's up there watching all of us. Why do I need to go through the archer to speak to the committee? You see, in addition to being an airborne artillery platform, Coalition Warship Archer is also the linchpin of the Coalition's surveillance and communications infrastructure in Revachon. Hold on, it's watching us too? And listening. 
It has the most objective vantage point in the entire city. Not to mention a vast array of radio, photographic, and meteorological monitoring instruments. I find it a great comfort to know there are benevolent powers watching over all, in strict accordance with the Wayfarer Act and the Bristol-Muna Convention. So how does one go about contacting a coalition warship? Hmm. This is quite the problem. Very tricky. Of course, the Archer has orders to fire on any unidentified aerostatics that might approach it. So it might be safer to get in touch from the ground. But in that case, you would require a radio transmitter capable of broadcasting on coalition frequencies. And that kind of technology naturally isn't typically available for non-coalition use. Yes, it is a bit of a conundrum. I suppose there might be some way to circuit bend your way onto those frequencies, but you'd have to be one of those techno tinkerers to do it. Do you know any of these tech tinkerers? Unfortunately not, no. I don't have the pleasure. I am merely a representative of the coalition government, not very well versed in technology. But you? Sounds like something that programmer we met in the church might be able to help with. Oh. Let me just say that I have complete confidence in the RCF. I'm sure you'll figure something out. Mm, what are you doing, I? Mm, well, that's très simple. I was visiting the fishing village just north of here. They have applied for a series of microloans to revitalize the old market. And, well, I wish to see the situation firsthand. And then, well, I had some extra time on my hands, so I decided to stroll down here. It's quite peaceful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Did you see the bullet holes in the wall over there? Ah. Uh -huh. Is that what those pockmarks are? I might have guessed. Fascinating how much history is contained right here, if only one knows where to look for it. You feel like there's something you could say here, if only you really knew what was going on. Actually, there was something else I wanted to ask you about. I'm all ears, officers. Uh, Always my pleasure to be of assistance to the RCS. Godspeed, and if we don't meet again, bon shot. Okay, so I can ask the lady, find someone with technical experience. So that might be the lady in the deep church, which if she's willing to help me. Maybe that'll get her out of the church so I can let the other people in. Okay, not fast travel right now. So uh, I guess we gotta go around this way. Um. Yes, what is it? Ooh, 92%. It's not a paying job, but could you you help me contact Coalition Warship Archer? Do I look like someone who has time for side projects at this moment? She doesn't even look up from her computer. If you want her help, maybe you should help her first. Uh. What if I just off force you to leave? Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research. You mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I can help with something. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. What is an off-site copy, and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She points to the glowing cube inside the machine. She's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? What is an off-site copy and why do you need it? If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? Oh god, not this again. It is not on site. It is in the basement. 
perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on site. And no, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? She stares at you with pleading, furious eyes. This is clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself numerous times. By your old workspace, do you mean the studio of Fortress Accident in the office building on Plaza? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Wait, bookstore lady? You mean Placence? That's her name, I believe. And where exactly is the offsite copy? There's this giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. It's there. Don't worry, you can't miss the bear. It's hideous. Mm, why can't you go and get the filming yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Why does she think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez. And people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. That's a bit biased, don't you think? Yeah, people from Martinez don't really like to get with the times. Don't be too harsh. That's only because of their socioeconomic situation. What if it does emit elemental evil? She literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my rain city. I'm not making this up. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. Once I came in one morning, only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. It looked like some seminine magic. So what I need you to do here is go have a talk with her, say that you're a policeman and need to get to the building's basement. Then bring me the offsite copy. All right? All right. I'll go look for Thanks. it. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. And here's my false multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offsite copy, then you can keep the false one. It hurts oh. a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Caval soon. I wonder if that lets me get into the basement of the whirling in rags, too. That blue door. Mm hmm. Explore the secret passage. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I'm sure. Could these wires work as a contact microphone? Alright, I know I definitely can't fast travel from in here, so let's go out. And we will do our best to fast travel back to the main area. Please just let it work. Perfect. Okay, so let's definitely check the bookstore first. And then after bookstore, maybe we'll go back to the Whirling and Rags. I still haven't found your husband. I don't know where that guy is. Again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Also, there's a huge fridge in the basement's cellar. Can you leave me there? A fridge? No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? She nods at the bookshelves. For whatever reason, she's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. Mm. Why are you so tight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other I side. I told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. She's so tense, it's a miracle she hasn't stepped in half yet. Why are you still talking about books? Are you trying to put a spell on me? If it's just a storage room, then why are you so tense? If it's just a storage room, then why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it? If it's just a storage room, then it wouldn't hurt if I just peeked inside. It's not like it's cursed, right? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile, and something breaks. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? 
happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Take it easy. You've broken her resistance. Pushing her further will gain nothing. How does this curse manifest itself? Why don't you just tell me right away it's the curse? Have you sought help from anyone? It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. It's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow. Void raves. You have new words. Such raves may prove a formidable enemy. <laughs> Suit up. Um, have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear. It's not enough. Is your pendant part of the ward as well? Oh, this. No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't that curtain just move? Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Ah, Annette mentioned that the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. Wait, that's it? I was hoping for something more paranatural. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. It sounds familiar. Strange, I feel I wanted to. What does it mean? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para-detective. You have to let me be to the cellar. There's something I desperately need from there. A few more questions about the curse. Convince her to let you investigate the Dune commercial area. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. <laughs> Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. Wait, what if I don't want to lie? Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranormal situations before. I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic ammunitions from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I return from the void, a paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. I admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because of Spectral Realm is parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go. Your words bring, brought me here in the first place. The Seminese blood also runs through me. I'm the Void Revenant. I have the powers to debattle the bad energies. You're part Seminese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The fandoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? A hand on your heart, on my honor. I'm actually not really feeling the vibe anymore and the psychic force has left me. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The Entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. 
Of course, the entity. Close your eyes, for I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimneys aren't big enough for that. Chimneys, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. Ooh, she's letting me in. Find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Um... Okay, but please, only a few questions. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirit. Alright, I've asked her everything. The woman looks ugly. Very well. You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark space. I haven't done anything yet. What? I was trying to click on this thing. Honorable one, you have accumulated a substantial amount of honor points on your life path. You are a man most virtuous. Wait, there were honor points? I only try my best. It's the most any of us can do. Hold your horses. This is a mistake. Honor is meaningless. Oh, the modesty on this one. Another ten honor points for you, sir. You are on the fast track to becoming one of the rarest, most revered of all police officers, an honor cop. Is an honor sort of archaic concept? My honor is my life. Yes, your deeds are spoken for you, honorable one. But to fully drape oneself in an eternal cloak of honor, a ritual must be completed. A rite of honor. Even among the honorable, only the most dignified are deemed worthy. But you, O oh honorable one, have excelled in honor. Honor comes from deep within you. And to truly know oneself, to know one's honor, one must reach deep within oneself and touch one's honor. Okay. You need to bring the thumb of your right hand, your sword hand, to your rectum and stick it in there to form the arch of honors what what if someone comes and sees me all i ever wanted was to live with dignity to die with honor stick your thumb in your ass you're crazy if you think i'm just going to stick a finger in my ass no way most dishonorable yeah, are those who have known honor carried honor in their hearts and then disowned honor they are the honor fallen you brought much shame on your family today. Your name will forever be tarnished by this most shameful of deeds. Be forever banished, shameful one. Why was this why was this thought or thing trying to make me stick my finger in my ass? What is going on? Um Yeah, that's a no. Uh, alright. Alright, we can level up. I could level up authority, but you know what? Not after you tried to have me stick my finger in my ass. Interfacing, interfacing. Um, interfacing. Physical instrument. Pain threshold. Interfacing, interfacing, composure. Tons of interfacing stuff. And physical instrument, actually. Can I even level fit interfacing up anymore? Oh, I can. Okay. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Pull them open. Here you we go. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back. Covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards, your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh. Escapes from Pleasance as she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. 
Sorry, lady, don't worry. I got it. A ghostly silhouette of hairdress, hair dryers. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Unlock the door with the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Now nah, we ain't putting Kim in there, open the door now. Oh, Kim got something to say to me. What is this place? Two lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. It's an adventure. It's another world beyond the veil. Looks like a gym to me. I think this may be the art and med tips boxing club for young athletes. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. He draws a stripe on a dusty floor with his foot. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. I knew my flashlight would come in handy eventually. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? All right. Sand is dripping from the punching bag. The poster says, City is Fortis. The rest is worn off. I shot football. Interesting. Um, so here's the, uh, the multi-tool. Equip this to open locked containers in the world. This is an advanced pry bar. Pry bar plus two, if you will. Built by Kvalsen and Vasa, the number of gadgets hidden within the frame of the yellow and gray multi-tool will stagger any tech technician. A ball used for playing shot put, a favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. Oh yeah, those old guys that uh, always argue about that lady. I think they're messing with shot puts. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no barbells on the... No collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it then. Kind of a bastard, but just remove the collars. Should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. This familiar because my weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Huh. Alright, let's leave. Worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. Okay, let's go in here. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. A large demijohn full of strange liquids. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Poor animals, no rest for their bodies after death. Airship rotors covered in spider webs, they remind you of blades. Why is the music getting all weird? Looks like the remains of the 24th window repair shop. A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. I got some money. Oh, I can hear the the machine, but where are the clothes it used to display? 
Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? You should adopt one of those Wilkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a Wilkin. One of the Wilkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Wilkin. It's Vara Hamira, a high Wilkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Wilkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. How would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them and are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. Lieutenant nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Let me find out Kim's into like role playing. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkin. Look at those details. So much effort. Out of everything that we've come up, this is what this is this is what Kim's all and about. For what? All gone. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dwarg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Expect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Everyone is constantly teetering on the edge of the abyss, an abyss of production. These squares look orderly, but beneath them is chaos, worry, pain. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Keep reading. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Huh. Okay. A dusty radio computer sleeps on its wired frame, forgotten and unused. Its keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. Another radio computer, just sitting here without anyone inside. This is the Ream Civic radio computer, model RC5120, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. You think I should turn it on? It's your call. You're in charge of this expedition, officer. Okay.
The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. The lieutenant notes observing the machine. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Nothing happens. Huh. Scribbled across a notebook. Developers the most advanced RPG in the universe. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pedantic. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like all of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Mm-hmm. The cost of air with alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's obvious this is what remains as soon as Radio Game Studio Fortress accident. Yes, I got that. What I meant was... What were they trying to achieve with this damn game? What were their ambitions? Because this here looks rather advanced. He has respect and curiosity for this failed endeavor. This is way above your tiny little policeman head. I don't know, not an artist. Okay, well, I think. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. How are you planning to do that? Two call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories. Functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real 
immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped fitting out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... Lieutenant tells his head thinking. They were insane if they thought this would work. It was just a play to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. The curse got them, I see another explanation. The world is cold and lonely, this would keep it the company, let's finish it. Do you have any money? Let's give them more money so they can finish. Yes, especially in here. The lieutenant looks around the derelict room. The pipes howl at a, and a rack heart crosses the floor in front of your feet. Okay, let's keep moving. Alright, wow, well. Still have some things in here to look at, but I think we're going to do that in the next video. So if you enjoyed this, if you'd like to see what happens next, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And we're going to keep keep exploring these uh, these abandoned underground, whatever this is. Um, and hopefully get what a girl back at the at the church needs so she can get out. We can get the movers in. Um, it's also getting evening time, so we got to go sing some karaoke. You know that stuff's going to happen on the next episode. And if you want to know what it looks like, make sure you come on back for part 31. And until then, peace out.